Hey guys, uh, 29, day 29 of 30 meetings in 30 days, uh, one step to freedom. Uh, next Monday night, uh, the 11th, we'll be meeting at the church, 1407 Canal Street. Uh, it's 631, uh, time of fellowship, uh, time of this uh, curriculum, time to share. Uh, with each other, we'll social distance. We'll remain uh, far away from it, far away from each other, not too far away, so we can't hear each other. Um, but it'd be a great time of, of fellowship. I encourage you to come out and uh, just enjoy this curriculum. But uh, you'll be able to add what the Lord has put on on your heart. Um, I'll let you know where we're going to be. Um, for that class and you can have your your papers or I'll, I'll have some printed out also but uh just encourage you to come out invite uh invite your friends or neighbors or whoever uh, is struggling right now um and to come out and uh, allow the lord to come in and uh, change their heart from the inside out uh, the relationship with jesus christ uh, we're, we're new creations uh, it's not a 20-step Thing that we have to do we lay lay our burdens cast our cares upon the Lord and he saves us and and that's where we start and then we can start beginning a, a new life in Christ Jesus uh, immediately uh, it's a beautiful thing we're, we're looking at uh, in the book of James I probably look at this uh, for the next few days and then maybe we'll pick up this when we start next week also in the, in the book of James uh, looking at uh, trials and temptations um, right now. Um, James 1, 12 through 13, or 12 through uh, 15, actually. It says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you're being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Sin leads to death, uh, leads to physical death. Uh, spiritual death, um, death of relationships, death of jobs. Uh, sin will burn every bridge that you've ever crossed in your life if you allow, allow it to. It'll, sin will bring death to your, your dreams, to your hopes. Um, uh, to, it'll bring sin will bring death to a, a career. I mean, it just goes on and on and on on what what sin, what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to do what? John 10.10 10 tells us that the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He'll, he'll come into your life as much as you allow him to come in, and he'll take whatever you're willing to give to him. Jesus Christ has eliminated that power of sin in our life at the cross, but we can open up that door and allow the enemy to come in and rip us off as much or as little as we want. It totally depending on us. We have that choice every day, every moment of every day to follow the Lord or to, or to, to allow the enemy to come, come into our life. Sin will lead to death. Um, let's see, verse 16 and 17, it says, So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. So here's a question here. Why is a trial a gift from God? Why would that be placed in the, in the, in the context of, of this scripture? Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God, or God our Father. Why would that be placed there? Because it's an opportunity for us to grow. Um, we saw this in, in chapter 1 earlier in verse 2. It says, when troubles come your way, consider an opportunity for great joy because you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it, let it grow. I mean, every good and perfect gift is, is from above. Trials are good. 
uh, and perfect, and they come from God our Father. He doesn't change. There's nothing that's happening in your life that he didn't allow it to come, come in, in, into your life. He wants to see us grow. He wants to see us change. He wants us to, to lay those things down at his feet or even kick some of those things to the curb so things will come into our life that he's testing our faith. He's, faith. he's purifying our, our, our faith. Uh, the day he created the world, God was and God was good. God is good. Today's God is good. And since he is a blessing, since he is a blessing God, we can infer the trials that we're in are also a blessing. It may not appear to be a blessing at first, but we will see in time that trials not only bring about good, but also bring about Christian maturity. It's like, what can I find? What can I, what can I experience? And, and, and especially right now with all this, this turbulence and pestilence and this plague and, 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 and this uh, virus going around, what, what good can I get out of it? Am I seeking his kingdom above all things? Or am I finding myself worrying and being anxious? And, and where's this going to happen? How is this going to happen? When is this going to open? When is this? Or am I just relying on the blood of Jesus Christ that, that cleansed me and purified me and clothed, clothed me in his son's righteousness? Am I relying on on that during all, all of the all of this time uh, James 1 19 and 20 it's qualities needed in trials so it, there's qualities that we need in trials L look at this uh, in verse 19 and 20 it says understand this my dear brothers and sisters you must all be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So considering the nature of trials and temptation, what qualities are, are needed? What qualities are needed? We need to hear. We need to listen. We need to be quick to listen. We need to be slow. We need to slow to speak, slow to get anger. Anger never shows God's righteousness in us. Being angry is the opposite of the fruits of, fruits of the spirit. That is not that our anger does not does not come from God. It comes from with his comes from w within. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get get um, get angry. I mean, you've heard it over. I mean, that's why two ears and you know one one mouth, two ears. When we talk too much and, and we don't listen, we assert what? We assert that we're more important than other people. How many times have I mentioned? How many times did the Apostle Paul said we ought to think of each other as more highly? Of, of ourselves. Jesus said to do what? To love him and, and love each other. Loving is to listen. Sometimes it's better just to sit there and, and listen. You know, we all have opinions. We all have antidotes. But sometimes it's just good to be come alongside someone and, and just, to, just to listen. God tells us to listen and slow to speak. What happens when we lose our, our temper during trials? Well, it, it does not produce the righteousness that God that God desires. The wrath of man can never produce the righteousness of God. Anger does not produce the righteousness that, that God desires. We are clothed in the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. When we're angry, we cannot be an example of God. We're followers of Jesus Christ. If people see us getting angry, what does that show the world? What does that show someone who may be on the brink of laying their life down to Jesus Christ and surrendering to him and then they see one of his believers get angry or lose their self-control or, or have a lack of patience or, 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 or continually stumble and fall in, in the same areas in, in their life? I mean, how would that benefit, benefit a anyone? Uh, God is patient. God is tender. God is kind. God is long-suffering. God is God is loving. Just look at how uh, how all of those things He has been towards each and every one of us. I mean, especially the patience. God God has been so patient with us because He doesn't want any of us to perish. He wants all of us to come to the saving knowledge of His Son Jesus Christ. So we know that He's so patient. He's so long long suffering. He's so tender at times. He, he's so kind. So loving. 
enduring through trials and temptations is part of everyday experiences of true believers. Every single day we're going to be going through some. How many times have you heard me say that we're either in, in coming out of a situation, coming out of a trial, getting ready to go into a trial, or we just came out of a trial? It's just that that's what human life is. Human life is just full of trials, full, full of te tempta temptations, and we have to rely on, on G Jesus Christ. What do we need to do? We've got to read the, his word. We've got to believe in the word that we're reading. And we have to apply God's word into our life to have victory o over these things. We need to listen more. I'll say that again. We need to listen more. We need to speak less and let the creator, the creator of the universe be the ruler of our hearts, reside in, in our lives. We need to focus on, on growing in, in the relationship with, with God. That's why it's so important to have devotions a, a, a every single day. Rather than fixing our, our, our sights on, on the, the things that are happening outside, but like the Apostle Paul tells us to focus our energies on what lies ahead, not on the things that we did last week or last year or five years ago. You can't, we cannot fix yesterday we cannot make yesterday better but we can focus everything on what on what lies ahead and we need to remain steadfast in his truth on the foundation that he has given us and we need to be faithful when trials come our way and be obedient and when we hear that still small voice from from god to be submissive to that voice it's not not just be hearers of the word but to be doers of the word and that will help us face our temptations amen God, I pray. I pray for all of us, God, in these times right now, God. That with all the things that we're going through, Lord, would you just help us, Holy Spirit? Help us, God, to exhibit the, the, the fruits of the Spirit that, that you, you've extended towards us with your grace, Lord. Help us to get to that next level in our walk, whatever that means for each of us individually, God. Help us to look after each other, get in each other's kitchens, help us to phone each other and text each other and see how each of us are doing. But Lord, help us to pray for each other, to lift each other up. So we thank you today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.